Hello everyone, welcome to Geometry Nodes in 3.0. Today, I'll be teaching you how to make this data map effect using 3.0 Geometry Nodes. So, let's get started. What we first want to do is clear the scene right here, and we want to add in a new plane right here. This plane will be the basis of our effects, and what we want to do first is add in a ton of points on this mesh using the point instance on points, or distribute points on faces node, sorry about that. That node will come into play later. Let's up the density by a considerable amount. Let's say uh, 1000 seems pretty good for now. What we want to do next is input our image texture. So go to texture, image texture. And the image texture that I'm using is this height map of the USA. You could use something like cell phone coverage maps or anything that has a black and white gradient like this. The white parts will be the high points and the black parts will be the low points. So we bring this in here, select our map. What we want to do is input the UV map of our plane into here. So to do that, we use this method. We click this little button and we click uh, face corner UV map. Eventually, probably in Blender 3.1, there will be a uh, UV input, kind of like how we have the position input. But for now, this is what we have to do. It's kind of a workaround, but uh, that's the best we got. So, next what we are going to do is use a set position node and a vector math multiply node right there. Put that into there and that into there. And as we could see, if we move the multiply, we could see that these points are being raised. I'm going to scale this a little bit in the x direction to make it more proportional to the image so it's not squashed. And yeah, as we can see, this is moving up as intended. But what if we want to delete all the uh, points that are on the edge here that, as we could see in the image, are just plain old black. They don't contribute anything to the scene and they'll just lag our computers if uh, we render all these later on. Well, to do that, we use a delete geometry node right here. So if we use a math and use a less than or greater than node, in this case, I believe it's less than, and we hook that into there, we could see that we are kind of culling the uh, dark pixels in the image. So we only keep the ones that have a significant value to them. In this case, 0.1 is a good enough threshold, but you'll have to see with your image, some are better, some are worse. Sometimes you have to paint in the black like I had to do here. There were Canada and Mexico here, and I had to paint them out just because the USA was the main focus, and I didn't want clipping to happen up there and down there. But yeah. So next, what if we want to uh, instance stuff here? So to do that, let's make in a new cube for a pin. What we want to do is move this down so that the top of it is hitting the origin right here. That'll become important later when we go for uh, scaling and stuff like that. So let's scale the X and Y down to something like 0.1. There we go. And then let's use an instance on points node. Uh, input instance on, no, 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 no. Point instance on points instances instance on points node there we go even i get confused with where things are so don't worry about it if you get confused so let's put that in there put that into the instance to that and as we can see uh the pin is a bit too big still so we can either scale this down manually or uh, we could just scale down in here there we go that seems fairly good and now what we can do next is, what if we want this to not have the negative input uh, or impression on the bottom? What if we want, want all of these to scale to uh, zero right here? Well, to do that, we could use uh, this multiply node, put it in here, and we need to add a little bit in here so that it doesn't just scale to point uh, to zero on the z-axis. As we can see here, if we set this to something like 0.5, that we got the x and y at 0.5 and the z, it's mirroring. That's because this rod right here goes to two meters down. We want this at one meter down. So let's bring this up. And as we could see, all of these meshes, or instances, not meshes, uh, hit the zero mark and do not go below it. So there we go. That's pretty good for everything right there. And let's see, what's next? Ah, shading. So for shading, let's click this and go into the shader editor and click new and what we're going to use for the shading on this is the position input so we go into input 
and use the object info position. As we could see, we get the position of the instances without a gradient or anything like that. It's just one color per instance at its location. What we want to do is separate these. So if we go to converter and click separate X, Y, Z, we could see that we get the X, Y, and Z axes. What we want is the Z axis because the tops of these are one and the bottom of these are zero. And if we use a color ramp here, I'll use the colors that I used in the rendered view. Uh, we could set the bottom to red or wait, the tops were red. The bottom was around this blue color and the tops were this reddish pink color. There we go. And if we hook that into the base color of the principled BSDF and click that right there, we could see that, boom, this looks pretty good. Um, okay, what else? We should, before we get into the final rendering phase, I should teach you some optimizations. So if we go into geometry nodes, again, we could do something interesting where if we set this to something like 4,000, no, 40,000 instances, it starts to lag out our machines. 40,000, not 4,000. There we go. We can see that there's lag, but we get a lot more detail. So what if we want this amount of detail only in the render? Well, to do that, we use the is viewport node. Is viewport right there. So what this does is give us a value of zero or one. If we are looking at this in the viewport, it'll give us a value of one. And if we are rendering, it'll give us a value of zero. So using this in a map range node, there we go. We could say that, hey, if we're in the viewport, uh, have this be at one, 100 density or 190 because that's why input. But if we're rendering, use the 3000 input. Now I'll show you this by switching to EV so that the render is a ton faster five samples. Let's render this. And yeah, as we can see, we have a lot more points in here than we do in the viewport. And that's how you get around your computer being slow or anything like that while working on it. So yeah. Also, another thing to know, what if we want to affect the density of these uh, points? Like what if we had a ton of points right here? We want, we want them to be more sparse in the areas that are lower. To do that, we use a random value node and simply hook it up into the less than input right here. So in the parts where there's a low value, there'll be less, and up here there'll be more. If we manipulate this, we could get a different like fall off for the effect. So if we want like just a general, like a little bit less here, but a lot here, we could do that. And if we render this again, we could see that, you know, we're getting the effect less where there's less population and more where there's more. Uh, one way that we could have done this is using the poison disk method and just hooking the image into the density factor, but that relies on the underlying geometry. So if you have four points, it won't work well. You would have to subdivide it a ton. So for simplicity's sake, we're just going to use this method because it basically does the same thing with a little bit less hassle. So let's switch that back to random. And yeah, now it's time for the final rendering phase of this. So let's put this over here. Also, I'll just do this right now. Make sure you organize your nodes. Make sure they're nice and pretty using frames and stuff like that. Because when you're working on big projects in geometry nodes, it's always a pain to look around for your stuff. So just group them together so that you can move them around easily. And yeah, there we go. So back to shading. Uh, what I did for the shading is I just turned the roughness up a bit so that the pins aren't so glossy. And if we look at my lighting setup here, we could see that we have two point lights right here and here, and a plane that's just black. And if we go into the viewport here, we could see all that. Uh, to make your uh, these pins look more interesting, we could go over here. And one thing I found that works is just scaling this down to something small like 0.2 makes these look a lot more interesting, more like pins rather than just squares. So let's start setting up a final render position or resolution. Uh, this is 3000, we want 30,000 or 40,000, 30,000 or 40,000, something like that. And if we hit render, as we could see, we have way too many, way too many, unfortunately. Hmm. Uh, hmm. One thing that we can do is affect the total scale of this. Like if we go into geometry nodes again, uh, we could just scale this down a bit. 
And if we render again, we should see something pretty good. I use cycles for the end rendering because we get a lot of very nice bounce lighting. And if I render it right now, we could see that, boom, it looks pretty good. Almost like the end result I showed you in the beginning. In the beginning, I wasn't using the density factor. So if I turn that off and maybe turn down the amount right here, we could see the final render result. So yeah, that is basically the entire tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to check out my Twitter page, my Gumroad page, and uh, there's a lot of free and paid stuff on my Gumroad page. It's very nice, very, very useful for beginners and intermediates alike. But yeah, make sure you like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next tutorial.